Hello you guys, welcome to a new video and I am in my old bedroom again that now is my office. I didn't have enough space for cutting out fabric, especially for skirts and stuff like that. So I moved back here and you can see the books up there. And um, in this closet I have all my materials and I basically emptied this room. So here are my costumes. Um, here is some fabric and here I have my materials and my sewing machine and my violin that I should pick up and play one day again. I have an electric one, I prefer that because people don't hear me playing in the house. But I should also use my acoustic one again because I fear that I will somehow be afraid of playing it again if I don't do it. So, um, well, yeah, back to the point. My holiday started and I thought I'd do something like every second day vlogging. And I start today, today, Saturday. Um, a friend of mine will come over, but I just um, got a package with some fabric and this is a mess. I have to clean it up. I will do that Monday, I think. Um, so here's the fabric that I got. I got some knit. I got something that I want to turn into trim for a burgundian dress, into a fur trim. And I got some faux leather because I just want to try and make shoes. And I got this jacquard. It is so beautiful. It was on sale, so I bought seven meters of it and um, I just got up and drank some coffee and then went into the room <laughs> and unboxed all of the goodness and um, then I immediately went through my stash to find something that matches this fabric and I have some red taffeta and also red satin. I'm going to use these for the petticoat that will be visible. It will be something from the 18th century, I forgot to tell you. And I also have some leftover beads that I'm going to use. I don't think I'm going to use those green ones, but maybe the bigger cream color ones. And yes, it's going to be something from the 18th century because I just made the undergarments and since my other gown that I planned will take so much time because of all the embroidery, I thought I could pick up a second project from the 1780s that I could do a bit faster, so I will have something finished, hopefully, soon. Maybe even in my holidays, but I'm slow. So yeah, enough of all the waffling. Um, I will get to work now and I'll see you later. So yesterday I didn't do that much and today's Sunday and I think I'll do a three day of vlogging because I don't have much to show. So I started to pleat the satin that I'm going to use for the back of the visible petticoat. There we have the rest of the fabric. I decided to use the taffeta in the front just because I like the, like the color shifting much more than I like the satin, but the color is really gorgeous. It looks pinkish in the camera, but it really is a beautiful deep red and not that purple. So working on the skirt, I will pleat the two parts of it and you can hear my cat again then sew it together it will work just as the under petticoat here and then i'm going to drape the bodice and it's string out of this jacquard so i got the back pleated i have secured the pleats and i cut the hem to a length that I hope is going to work out and now I am going to pleat 
the front part of the skirt and it will be flat with some double pleats on the sides since most volumes should be on the sides and on the back and I'll show you that as soon as I finish. I just went forward because this is a project that I just go into. I did my research, I have an idea of the design, but actually I'm just doing it. So yeah, there will be a lot of changes in my plans. And here you see the skirt, I pinned those layers together, wrong sides facing each other because I'm going to do French seams. These are the back pleats and the front pleats and up there. I already cut and pinned the ruffle also uh, wrong sides facing each other to do French seams and tomorrow I will finish that skirt. Good morning you guys, today is Monday, this is the last day for this vlog and I'm trying to settle on a design for the bodice and overskirt part and I somehow got captured by this one. This is um, Nancy Bradfield's costume in detail and this is a dress from the 1770s to the 1780s and I really like the trim on this. Um, for the skirt I want to do something like that for the under petticoat. Um, there will be this ruffle that I'm working on. The thing is I would also like to do those ruffles on the bodice in red and I would add ruffles on the sleeves and neckline and what I do here I have to find out but I don't really have that much fabric left so I really don't know well I can use the one very narrow stripe for the sleeve ruffle that's my cat He, he, he always reacts when I talk. Yeah, now he's complaining again. I'm talking about books. So cute now he's sitting down there okay so I want to do something like this I have another design that I really like but I think I'm go with I'll go with this because I wanted to keep it easy um, so I think yeah something like that would also be very nice but <sighs> I love this book by the way so yeah, enough of the talking, I think I'm going to go with the first one and see where that design leads me to, because I always change something on the go. So I have another book. This is Women's Hats, Headdresses and Hairstyles by Georgine de Gourdet. And I want to do a hat to go with my dress. And I really am a little bit short of my taffeta and satin. There we go again. I'm always short in fabric. But if possible, I would love to do something like this. And um, the bow here would be in red satin or taffeta. And the hat itself would be covered in the brocade. And maybe I have some wine red. But, ah, I have wine red left. I have wine red lining, I think. Maybe I can use that. So, yeah, I would also like to... That was my cat. Again. So, <laughs> it will be covered in um, the cream-colored jacquard and then aligned with fine red fabric and a fine red bow. And that's it. So, the sun is starting to shine and I'm doing French seams on the skirt and the ruffle that I prepared and hopefully I can finish this skirt tomorrow morning. Um, yeah, as I said, I have a little problem because I have not enough fabric so I had to combine the um, satin with the taffeta. I hope that only the taffeta part of the ruffle will be visible and 
So I will wait with attaching the ruffle until I did the skirt part that is attached to the bodice, I guess, because then I can calculate how much space I have for the taffeta and yeah, I'll see. Maybe it's not that bad if you see the satin too, but I don't know yet. So I pieced together the waistband from the remaining wine red satin I had and it is <laughs> not that nice, but it will work out, I hope. Um, I also cut out the second tie and waistband from the wine red um, lining fabric that I have. My cat is yawning. And I really hope that I have I have a little piece left from the wine red taffeta and I hope that I can get the trim for the sleeves and the neckline of the bodice out of that. And yeah, wish me luck. So I am pinning down the hem of this skirt and I'm going to machine sew it because I don't want to invest hours in hand sewing it down when it's covered by a ruffle anyway. So that's what I'm up to and after that I will pattern the bodice that will go over it. So I more or less finished my skirt. I have to iron it because the faults in the fabric are still there. And also the plates look a little bit messy but other than that, whoop, yeah I wear it over my petticoat and my bum pad. The back is the satin and the front is this beautiful taffeta and I really like the shape that I have. Absolutely love this A-line. And yes, now on to the bodice. I'm not wearing stays but the shape will not differ that much. So now I'm going to drape the bodice and then do a mock-up probably because I can't really drape it on my dress form since the silhouette is different. So I started patterning. It looks a little bit poor right now but um, as soon as I transfer it on paper all those lines will be straight. Um, I'm gonna do a mock-up and then do the alterations and probably another mock-up because it's going to be boned and stuff like that and I don't want to have folds that are not nice and yeah that's it and um, now I'm going to show you my two reference dresses so here you see the two dresses I settled on um, for the cut of the bodice I'm going to go with this here just because it is so well drawn that I see how the back is cut and stuff like that but it will not be a bolognese it will more or less be like this without the trim here what I'm doing now is I just draft this bodice and I can add whatever I like in the end or whatever I have enough fabric for forgot to mention something before yes you can see that shift but um, the shift when I wear it is just above the stays, so this is no problem. It just looks off on my dress form. I'm now doing the shoulder part as you can see and that's the way I dropped. I know I do it like an amateur because I am an amateur. but. That works for me and the patterns I have in the end normally work with little alterations so I just do it the way it works. So I finished more or less draping the bodice. Um, I will have to lengthen it I think. This is not the final product um, but I have to cut it out so together and try it on to see what alterations I have to make so I have um, one piece in the front 
one shoulder piece and three pieces for the back. This one will be cut on the fold. And yeah, I think I'll lengthen them so that they are a bit longer and flare out. But I have to see. And yeah, I think I'll leave at this point and in my next vlog I will hopefully be able to show you a mock-up. I also have to drop the sleeve pattern and then finish the robe à l'anglaise. So thanks a lot for watching. I wish you a very nice week and see you soon. Bye!